Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we were going all around the Reach, taking care of all the quests that we can do here at the moment. And now we're basically done with the Reach, except for one thing at Port Prosper. We have something to do with our aunt and a meeting. They want to meet like an old friend or something. Uh, let's go see what that's about. Let's get a port report. Attend the Grand Ball, the glory of the Port Prosper season. Sure, I don't think I've done that before. Candles illuminate the great staircase that sweeps up to the residence of the Windward Company, which has been chosen to host this season's ball. West Enders promenade in their finest. Hoop skirts and starched collars predominate. White tie is the order of the evening. A few East Enders, mostly actors, have secured tickets, but most are servants if they are seen at all. The orchestra is playing the score from Victoria's first ball under her throne of hours. <laughs> I can be on my worst behavior. Or best. Fill out your dance card. Sky captains are always popular balls. You are a novelty in a static orbit. I can't do that. Mm. Oh, I have to be embraced by the prosperous West Enders. West? West. West Enders. Fuck the West Enders. Let's gossip with the servants. Those who serve know those who rule intimately. A disgruntled parlor maid has been press press ganged into serving canapes. That that's not how you pronounce that. Canopies. Canapes. Canapes does sound pretty cool. Press ganged into serving canapes. She's the favorite of several of the notables in attendance, and sufficiently irritated to disclose a very great deal indeed. One particularly boastful functionary has been sent to Port Prosper to remove him from doing any more damage rather than the promotion he believes it to be. She adjusts her smile before returning to the throng. Gained four savage secrets. Hoo hoo hoo. A fire at the Fulbright factory. Windward Company representatives race past carrying heavy buckets. Not going to deliver the cinders that we're also distributing flyers about how nobody should actually use them. So the inconvenient aunt's friend. I could either rely on my establishment credentials or rely on my local credentials, which I don't have. You need a reasonably high reputation with the prosperous West Enders. That's never going to happen. Oh, wow, you unlocked this with Affiliation Establishment 3. And I have three. It's actually a pretty high skill check. Why do I have such high establishment again? I think part of it's because of my officers, like you. Yeah, the Inconvenient Aunt gives me one establishment. Did someone else? No, you're Bohemia. Oh, the Fortunate Navigator is also establishment. And then I'm not sure where the other one's coming from. Maybe just from something I did? Look, I don't think all the affiliation comes from your officers, does it? Oh, no, they have... Wait. They have plus two establishment. Oh, right. I'm not getting the establishment from the Fortune Navigator because they're not uh, equipped. <laughs> they're not actually acting as my first officer at the moment. Right. Hmm. I need to keep that in mind if there's a skill check involving some sort of affiliation that I can switch on my officers to maybe meet that need. Anyway, rely on your establishment credentials to meet your inconvenient aunt's friend. They have requested we meet at the Admiral Nelson, your aunt says. You'll need to keep the right company to get in. They won't admit just anyone, she says proudly. A link in the chain. You are led to your table. Your aunt examines the menu with a critical eye. Ginger snaps, she exclaims. Goodness me. You cannot tell if this is a good thing or not. At last, an older lady joins you. She introduces herself as a countess. This is the last time, she says to your aunt. You're not to contact me again. The St. Dunstan's rendezvous concerned the murder of a son, the countess says, frowning. There were four attendants. The chaplain of the new sequence, February, Her Majesty's privy counselor, and Her Majesty, the Queen. 
Wait, isn't that only three attendants? She rises and thrusts what looks like a Christmas card into your aunt's hand before walking away swiftly. Your aunt has received a Christmas card from a countess. Talk to her on your locomotive. Is there anything else to do here? Like, I can't really explore anything. No. Can't interact with the East Enders anymore. For the moment. Ah, bargains. Needed establishment to get this. Well, I've got a little bit of space. Well, let's uh, speak with the aunt first. Quiz your aunt. What has she gotten involved in? And what's with the Christmas card? I'm sure it's a secret message. The Calendar Council. One tick, dearie. Just looking for... Aha! The clink of glass. Your aunt rises from an open suitcase clutching a dusty bottle of brandy. We've got to get to Pan in Eleutheria. That's where February is. Though she wasn't February when I knew her. She was my opposite number back in... Uh, but you want answers. February's on the Calendar Council. The revolutionary leadership. The Christmas card will get us into Winter's Reside. Your aunt brandishes the bottle. She has a fondness for brandy. I've been saving this for if I ran into her again. She'll get us into her good graces. She'll be able to tell us what went on and at St. Dunstan's. My, my. Aunt is so curious. I wonder what their ultimate aim is. I don't know. Maybe just to gain information. They told us they used to be a spy, right? Yeah, when we overheard this meeting at uh, the party that we went to with our aunt, I remember when they mentioned the revolutionary, I was wondering, revolutionary from what group? And apparently it's the Calendar Council, which I don't think I've ever heard mentioned before. Alright, we have at least a couple things to go to Eleutheria for. Still not going there anytime soon, I want to gather up some more before I go. Okay, I guess I'll just buy up all the deals. I got enough supplies and everything to go through. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's go on through the relay. Ah, the egg cracked. What's happened? A polished stone. I think we've seen this before, but I'll read it again anyway. The egg has a wide crack down the middle. Something glossy and black sits in the center. Prying the egg open, you withdraw a stone. The stone is darker than black, the color of oblivion. As you turn it, it catches a light that is not present in the hold. It's reflecting something more. It's possible to make out the shape of the building. Vast doors flanked by columns, dual shadows cast by twin suns. It is not a place in the high wilderness. Not now. I got a vision of the heavens. Okay. Present ourselves to customs. Nothing to declare. All good. How many permits do we have left? Oh, I have eight permits left. Let's go. We're back. Okay, I'm going to head over to London. A certain date. I don't know what this is. There's a tentative knock at your cabin door. Opening it, you find one of your more gregarious junior signalers. I've been going through the crew records, she tells you. I found something interesting. 
is the anniversary of the conductors stepping from the stone. The crew want to mark the occasion with a little shindig. Is she suppressing a grin? Oh. Would they really want a party? The, uh, what was their first name? The, I always forget it. Yeah, I can't remember their first name, the whatever signalman. Oh no, it's for the clay conductor. Anniversary of the conductor stepping from the stone. Oh, that makes more sense. Okay, yeah. The clay conductor will hate it, but it would be good for him and his relationship with the crew. You'll be on hand to supervise. This should be funny. A celebration. The signaler's face falls. You'll attend? I wasn't expect... I, I mean, I'll get started right away. Together, you prepare the galley for a celebration. You convince your cook to fetch the better brandy and to make something a little special. When the hour arrives, you lure the clay conductor in. To everyone's surprise, he stays. He makes painful small talk with your stokers and drinks far too much of the punch. Your crew regard him like a talking bear, but everyone is polite. While your crew are engaged in a game of poker that will definitely require disciplinary action later, the conductor tracks you down. He babbles earnestly about Aklis in Eleutheria and the clay men who work for the Murgatroyd Company. He would very much like to visit. The clay men who work for the Murgatroyd Company. We've heard Murgatroyd before. Murgatroyd's uh, tea house or whatever it was called in Lustrum. Clay conductor wishes to meet Murgatroyd's attendants at Aklis. So we have another reason to go to Eleutheria. Let's take care of business at London. Nah, uh, can we explore? Return to the gloomy middleman. Oh, right. We completed that quest where we needed to uh, uh, find out what was up with Titania's uh, red honey and why it had dried up. You resolve the situation with the Midnight Rose. Soon red honey will return to London. Will that satisfy the middleman's employer? Moving up the ladder. The middleman grunts, and so things return to normal, he says, in the tones of a vicar at a funeral. Cause for giddy celebration. But you notice that he finishes his drink and even orders another. Your performance was as expected. My employer would like to meet with you. The middleman gives you an address. The company offices for the Wit and Vinegar Lumber Company. The Wit & Vinegar Company can be found at a separate platform elsewhere in London. You'll need to fly there. Oh. Huh. Well, I guess it must be, like, somewhere here. This is the only little part I haven't explored. I said moving up, so I guess I'm... Yeah, I'm moving up in the ranks. Give me shadier deals, yes. Wait a sec, they didn't pay me or anything, did they? Cheap asshole. I don't know, maybe the person they want me to meet will pay me or something. Uh, let's go ahead and repair our ship. It's actually really damaged. Turn in our port reports if we have any. We actually might not, because you can only turn in port reports from this region. Hmm. Yeah, nothing to turn in. Oh, right. I also, quote-unquote, finished my quest for the Royal Horological Office, my first assignment as a proud member of their illustrious group. You know, the one where I, I failed to sabotage the clock at Port Avon? A new assignment. Okay, so yeah, I guess they didn't hear the details about what I did, so they're just giving me another one. If they did, they surely would have fired me. The chief hor horologist almost looks pleased to see you. Ah, apprentice third class, you're back. Good. Trust you're ready for your next assignment. Yes, give me something else to sabotage. <laughs> Good. Hurry up and tell them that they're living in the past, or possibly the future. Either way, not in the now. An intolerable state of affairs. I have an assignment in New Winchester. Okay, I'm not going back there for a while. I'm really eyeing that new ship. I think I can afford it 
in just a, I, I maybe could afford it now, but I want to make super sure that I can afford it by going to the floating parliament. I just grabbed a couple more prospects. We have an old prospect for parliament, five things of bronze wood, which is going to be a huge amount of profit. And I also just got a new one, three things of munitions, also for the parliament. So I'm going to deliver both of those, and then I'm definitely going to have enough money for the new ship, and probably the weapon as well. So, full of fuel and supplies and all the stuff I need, let's go to the floating parliament. Taking a stop at Perdurance on the way to the floating parliament. Oh, what is this? A party below stairs. Tonight, the surface bells from above, from above stairs, go ignored. The staff has a couple of hours to itself, to dance, to sing, to trade stories of their betters. The candlelit party lasts until the clock strikes midnight, and the butlers, maids, and other staff intend to make the most of it. Gossip with the staff, make uh, take tea with the butlers and maids. Let's take tea with the butlers and maids, only the finest quality, carefully stolen from upstairs. You sip your tea and bite down on stolen biscuits, occasionally being propositioned for a dance or to tell a story of your adventures in the high wilderness. Soon enough, however, the bell rings. Upstairs, Perdurance's perfect day begins again. Down here, everyone sighs and readies themselves for hard work. Let's get a port report. And, um, oh, they have some crockery as a deal, thanks to my affiliation establishment. Hmm. You know, I was thinking of buying five Ministry Approved Literature, but there's two reasons I don't want to do that. One, I don't actually have the room, and the other is that it's kind of expensive. And I'm just about to buy a ship, so I don't really want to do that. I was thinking to buy it, so I could later give it to the, uh... Super Lipsarians at the Quiet Sea up here. Let's do that some other time, though. Yeah. So I'll just buy as much of this as I can take. And I'm off to the Floating Parliament. Oh, I'm hearing bad noises. That sounds like the Talking Storm? Oh, boy. Hmm. Remember, I also got the attention of the, uh... I don't think it's called a talking storm, it's something like that. Um, remember I got their attention for doing something a little while ago. Something that reduced my terror by a lot, but got the attention of them. I'm just gonna go around. So that... Def, like, I've been here before and I wasn't here last time, so this storm does either move or there can be multiple of them at the same time or something like that. It's not always in the same place. At the floating parliament now, where I think I can take up my position as an MP or a PM. I think MP, member of parliament. But uh, first, let's sell a bunch of stuff. Oh, look at how much, almost 1,500. Oh, heck yeah. Get a Ministry Stamp Permanent as a bonus. And then we got these. Not going to be a huge profit, but it's something. Leveled up. Also gained a moment of inspiration. Oh, I'm glad I didn't buy them a full price. They have a bargain for the Ministry Approved Literature. Five, which is exactly how much I need. And now I have the room. Well, I'm going to buy that, definitely. Unlocked because Affiliation Bohemia. Okay, let's get a board report. And what can we do here? People's Perpetual Protest. I think we've seen this before, right? Yeah, this is the servants flock through the gate bearing trays of scones and piping hot tea to serve to the uh, protesters. It's all very civilized. Enjoy scone on the lawn. Nothing can go wrong while enjoying an only slightly stale bun. You unlock this with in possession of an aunt. Reduce my terror. I'm at 6%. 0%.
not like Auntie used to make. Your aunt examines the scone with professional distaste. I suppose when Jin complains, she mutters, but marches off to have a quiet word with the baker anyway. You eat the slightly stale scone, complete with flashings of jam and clotted cream. Observe the people's perpetual protest? Sure. Ah, I can either join or ignore it. Uh, yeah, I think we did this before. Elizabeth just ignores it. It's not going to do anything. It's a totally useless protest. Let's enter the House of Commons. A pair of particularly tough clay men guard the entrance. They never blink. Only ministers and MPs are permitted through the entrance. The wheels of government continue to turn, but its hulls have seen better days. Most are green-tinged from decades submerged in the stolen river. During that unusual historical interlude when London was stolen by bats. <laughs> Water still drips from unseen reservoirs of damp. Even so, the house remains a hive of favor trading, drinks promising, and constant debate. I can take over the department for Albion Affairs. A loquacious civil servant strides up to greet you. Ah, minister. Right on time. Am I? The loquacious civil servant glides through the labyrinthian house with an ease it took a career to acquire. This way, minister. Do step over the drunks in the hall. The journalists, you know. Old habits die hard. Ah, here we go. Your new dominion. He pushes open the door. Your new department's carpeted floor squishes underfoot. <laughs> Almost nobody glances up as you enter. You are, after all, just the next minister in a long chain of distractions to their work. The carpeted floor squishes underfoot. Ew. You have taken note of the will of the people. You've been given a government department. Alright, what do we have the power to do? The Department of Albion Affairs is a windowless, airless place at the top of many staircases. Outside your tiny office, a small regiment of clerks led by a loquacious civil servant busies itself with reports and paperwork, then carefully files it all away in an elaborate system designed to ensure nobody ever sees any of it again. I could just make a new law. <laughs> uh, visit the first secretary? Sure. As first among equals, he knows more about Parliament than anyone. A useful font of information. He sits at a huge mahogany desk in prestigious Downing Corridor. I think we've seen this description before. Ye yeah, I think so. Because we spoke of them before. Eh, ask about the state of Parliament. Where's the Prime Minister? Shouldn't they be running things? A sharp intake of breath. A very good question, Minister. Unfortunately, our illustrious leader decided it would be a better use of his time to take a boat into the flooded cellars. Where the wine is, you know. I'm not sure how many bottles are there, simply awaiting a net, but they say the deeper you go, the finer the vintages that one might find. I suppose I should send a search party when time permits. Until then, I really must finish this paperwork. How long ago did they go into the flooded cellar? You sure they're still alive? Ask about the political situation. Nobody seems to have any party affiliations here. A regretful sigh. Ah, you noticed. Yes, these days Parliament is split along rather less productive lines. We have the Committee for Radical Sovereignty, Devoted to finding ever more inventive ways to cling to the Empress's mighty skirts. The Subcommittee for Public Restoration would be as happy to see her gone, but is yet to come up with any workable plans. Finally, the Select Committee for the Chiltern Hundreds likes things as they are. With all three pulling in their own directions, it's no surprise that little gets done around here. He pauses. You may have wondered why I was so eager to bring some new blood into our little family. To wit yourself. I trust now you have an inkling. Wanted an outsider to bring some sense into this place, I guess? 
ask about himself. What is his role in the parliamentary system? Primus inter pares. Let me translate that. Primus inter pares is a Latin phrase meaning first among equals. It's typically used as an honorary title for someone who is formally equal to other members in their group. Okay, that's from Wikipedia, by the way. Minister, I'm but a humble functionary. It was my proud duty to serve the elected prime minister in an administrative capacity, and as and when we're able to conduct an election, I trust it will be my privilege to continue for his successor. Until then, my focus is on restoring this once august establishment to greatness, even if it means dragging Albion kicking and screaming back to the troublesome necessities of democratic process. Hmm. It's interesting. This first secretary, when they first recruited me and they said, like, it's fine, we'll just, we'll take you, you have the job, we just need butts in seats. I thought they just didn't give a shit at all. It just sounded like they'd completely given up on everything and didn't care. But it sounds like they actually do. Return to the House of Commons. Explore Parliament. Hmm. Yeah, you have full access to the House of Commons now and all its amenities. A faded empire. Parliament's green-stained halls are hardly what they used to be. Forty years ago, when the bats dragged London deep beneath the earth, its new cloaked masters stripped the place of its gold and finery. Only the two houses themselves, the Commons and the Lords, have been properly refurnished. Everyone else makes do. The journalistic lobby is set up a basic printing press in the estranged bar, with the new ministries established in any spare room or corridor. Occasionally, between the drinks and debates, some work gets done. I just love the casual mention to London getting carried off by bats beneath the earth. <laughs> That's just the world we live in. Visit your ministerial department. No doubt the Department of Albion Affairs is lost without its leader. Ah, and we're back here. Mm. Consult a loquacious civil servant. What is your role here exactly? The short version. This doesn't look short. <laughs> this doesn't look short at all. Minister, the traditional vocation of both this office and one in your esteemed position is to take upon the duty and indeed burden of establishing and integrating new legislation of a beneficial yet cost-effective nature for the Pan-Albion citizenry with a twin focus on problem elimination and controversy avoidance paradigms. And then one, or I, Roman numerals, I assume? Uh, the greater efficiency we demonstrate at this, on at least a prima facie basis, the greater slice of the budgetary pie will be allocated to our department, and the greater parliamentary status you personally, Minister, shall enjoy. Or I guess it's just... Is that just how a one looks with this font? Because then the rest aren't in Roman numerals. Uh, number two. With ascendancy comes reward. Minor ones, as ministerial salaries are currently primarily a barter-based economy for beverages of a noted alcoholic form due to a most regrettable budget shortfall and non-functionary related positions that are typically compensated through prestige. Number three. However, he adds, less than enthusiastically, I do understand that parliamentary... Envoys at Her Renewed Majesty's Most Celebrated Throne enjoy some budgetary flexibility to reward completed law-related projects, in gratitude for the demonstration of their continued purpose and presence at the moderate to highest levels of government. Number four. He smiles a thin, tight smile. I believe that covers the basics. I can give you the longer version if you would prefer. Are these actually options? They don't highlight when I mouse over them, though. Oh, yeah, I think I just need to press continue. Oh, oh, I didn't actually read these. These are just like actual summaries of what they were really saying, translating it from all this garbage to just, you know, what they're actually saying. Number one, make laws. Number two, the more laws you pass, the higher your status. Number three, we can't afford to pay you. Number four, exchange laws for sovereigns at the throne of ours. I get paid for making laws. That's not how that should work at all. 
The amount of laws you make are not a sign of amount of work you've done. It doesn't work like that. Should I make a new law? Time to get to the business of government. You can learn the will of the people at ports around Albion and the Reach. Bring it here to be the foundation of a new bill. You'll be working on this bill for a week and unable to leave until it's passed or rejected. Hmm. I need to learn what people care about before I can make a new law. Well, it sounds like I'm actually making useful laws then. I'm not just making up garbage. Like I'm actually listening to what the people want. Okay, I'm interested in that. Be stuck here for a week. That should be fine. Nothing time dependent going on. Sure. It is Monday. The week begins with endless meetings. You're spared the most tedious of them. The loquacious civil servant explains that in matters of government policy, ministers tend to be more of an unfortunate necessity than a boon. The loquacious civil servant consults the latest opinion polls. This is indeed a courageous law, he comments, in a tone usually served, uh, saved for a particularly unfortunate eulogy. <laughs> Every day you get one action to try to boost your bill's political capital. The higher this is, the better its chances of passing at the end of the week. Okay... Commission a voyage into the flooded cellars. Maybe we'll find the Prime Minister down there. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, 100% chance. 100% chance. 100% chance. Defang your rival with a generous act. What does this do? Uses salon stewed gossip. Oh, is that playing dirty? Yeah, that's playing dirty. Okay, well, they're all guaranteed to work. So I'm curious about this Prime Minister that's... Supposedly still down in the flooded cellars. A few gifts of some pre-fall wine will turn opinion in a hurry. There are small rowboats near the wine cellar entrance, down the stone steps into the freezing water. There's no light down here, but whatever torches you bring. The rowboat clinks against bottles fallen from the many shelves. Greyfields, 1882. Moralways, 1872. The master known as Mr. Wines liked to use the cold of the stolen river to keep its favorites at the right temperature. You emerge with enough to keep the whole house tipsy. Current polls indicate your bill has no support. Current polls indicate that only a tenth of Parliament supports your bill. I assume this was before and the next one's after? Tenth of Parliament. And we have a week to do this, right? To increase the chances? So it sounds like if it increases by a tenth each time, or 10%, then the most we can get it up to is 70% chance of succeeding. Well, actually, wait. Hmm. I don't, know, I don't know if that translates just to a percent chance of succeeding. Is it like a simple majority win? So if over 50% of Parliament supports it, it'll pass? I don't know how that works. It's Tuesday. Your secretaries busy themselves assembling the necessary paperwork for a week of intense legislation. The loquacious civil servant hurries in. Minister, I'm afraid to say that so far your political will is only clashing with your colleagues. Oh, with your colleagues won't. Oh, your political will is only clashing with your colleagues won't. Oh, that's a good one. I trust you have some secondary plans. Hmm. You want to play dirty? Okay. Defang your rival with a generous act. There are things you've heard, things you've learned, that could cause them trouble. You'll ensure that they cannot be shared further without requiring anything in exchange. As the embers of former blackmail material drift away, you shake hands and confirm the support of your biggest rival. They had better remember. <laughs> Wednesday, huge piles of paperwork await you in your office. Fortunately, you have a civil servant to handle that for you. Or civil servants, rather. The loquacious civil servant dispatches a secretary to check the mood of the house. He returns looking less than convinced. At least we have your back, Minister. It's 
seek a celebrity backer for your bill? Oh, you can do such cheap crap. Like, I mean, I've already done cheap crap. The first thing I did was give everybody wine. The second thing I did was blackmail a rival. You know, not exactly playing this most honestly. But then we can seek a celebrity backer for your bill and just... <laughs> Bribery campaign? Impress the house with your experience? Okay, that's actually good. Yeah, I've got 22 Sky Stories, that's fine. While they sit in the crumbling ruins of Parliament, you've explored the stars. You've seen things they cannot face, cannot even contemplate. But perhaps they should try. Few of the MPs have seen any more of the High Wilderness than could be glimpsed through the extra-thick stained glass of their luxury trains. Just hearing about some of the squirming horrors awaiting in the dark has them reaching for their handkerchiefs. If they weren't listening to you before, they certainly are now. Fifth of Parliament supports your bill. Isn't that what it was at before? It's Thursday. Slowly but surely, the new law is taking shape. Should I just keep scaring the house and telling them tales of the wilderness? It didn't seem to really help last time, but sure. Fear has always been one of the best political motivators. A third of Parliament supports your bill. Okay, that actually did something. You paint the fascinated MPs a tale of the wonders and hardships outside of their parliamentary cocoon, taking care to sprinkle in a few embellishments when they seem to be on the verge of dozing off. They may not all sink in, but they won't quickly forget the gory details. Friday, last day. The first draft of the new law is complete. Civil servants doze on their desks, eyes red raw from too much late working by candlelight. I believe we are starting to see some success, reads the loquacious civil servant's latest note. Whatever you are doing, I highly advocate its continuation and or escalation to be deleted as appropriate and with the greatest possible respect. Okay. Mm, can't use a story this time. So, none of these three options are particularly taking the high road. Once again, uh, blackmail, basically. I can invent a good sob story, or seek a celebrity backer. Nah, uh, that's it. Let's leak compromising information. Your friend, the phlegmatic journalist, is usually willing to be a conduit. A satisfying business meeting. All leaks take place in the estranged bar. The phlegmatic journalist is happy to spread the word about your bill in exchange for a little fresh bacon on your fellow ministers. True or not, it hardly matters. The squalid little rag he and his colleagues crank out between liquid lunches may be read by everybody in High Minster, but is taken seriously by nobody. You weave a fanciful tale and are credited as a source close to the First Secretary. It is a scrupulously honest title. Everyone is in close proximity here. Current polls indicate that just under half of the Parliament supports your bill. Ooh... What are my chances? 41% chance. Not great. Um, it's voting day. The first draft of the new law is complete. Civil servants doze on their desks. Yeah, that's the same. The loquacious civil servant has good news. Minister, I have it on good authority that the House is seriously considering backing your new law. Of course, you did not hear it from me in anything other than the strictest, most actual sense of the word. Okay. Come on. Fuck. Voted down. Despite your efforts, you are unable to convince the House to rubber stamp your bill. As everyone files out in search of drinks, you see one of the First Secretary's clerks waiting for you in the corridor. She shakes her head, conveying her superior's disappointment. Find more examples of the will of the people to pass a new law. Damn. A cabinet reshuffle. You are transferred to the Department of Imperious Acquisitions. Okay. Delegations are waiting in London, Port Prosper, Brabazon, and Perdurance. That would be the where to get will of the people, right? Well, two of those I can do. One, one is just on the way back to London, Perdurance. Uh... <laughs> 
Sorry, I was just reading this description of the Department of Imperius Acquisitions and laughing when I realized it's the same description because the place is fucking same. The Department of Imperius Acquisitions is a windowless, airless place at the top of many staircases, just like all the others. Oh, that's funny. Ask about the will of the people? How do you begin making a new law? Kind of already know this, but let's see what, what's said. A simple matter, Minister, oozes the loquacious civil servant. Those around Albion territory, which is to say Albion herself and the more civilized corners of the Reach, will often present themselves upon your arrival with their problems and little requests. Listen, return here, and your humble servants will put the wheels of government into motion. I don't like the term oozes as a verb for them speaking. A simple matter minister oozes the loquacious civil servant. That is gross. Don't ooze words, please. Anything new to talk about with the secretary? No, it doesn't look like it. If I explore Parliament, anything new to explore? Faded Empire, that's the same. No, that's all the same. I want into the House of Lords. The Victoria Tower. Okay. Well, I'll be coming back here. Um, Anything else I wanted to do here? Yeah, I bought all their bargain. Oh, right, and I leveled up. I'll be spending that level up later, though. I'm gonna head back to Berdurance and then London. Okay, I'm just trying to head to Berdurance, but this Albion Marauder will not leave me alone. I tried to run away, but they caught up to me. Cabin. Barrel of unseasoned hours. Back at Perdurance. Let's get as much of this bargain crockery as we can, which is all of it. Now, how do we get the will of the people? That's supposed to be somewhere here. Oh, listen to the will of the people. Endless problems, few solutions. You listen with appropriate amounts of care to each person who begs a moment of your time. The majority are local issues, not worth bringing up in Parliament. Occasionally, inspiration strikes for a new law. You promise, with a practiced politician's sincerity, that even if there's nothing you can do, you will do the best of your ability. They seem mollified by that. Okay, back to London. And back at London. I intended to buy the ship and equipment and all that stuff in this episode, but everything that I did at the Floating Parliament was a lot more extensive than I expected. So I think I'm going to end this episode here. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to buy a new ship. <laughs>